Hello, I'm Blendini and thank you for checking out my tutorial. Today we're going to do another procedurally generated plant, this incredibly quick and easy snake plant. We're going to build the leaves first and then build every object around it to make this scene. In this tutorial, I'll talk about the texture coordinate nodes difference between UV and generated. I'll demonstrate the wireframe modifier and displacement with nodes. And I'll show you how to make every texture shown here procedurally. I'll put time steps in the description and links in the comment section for these, so let's get started. Start with a new scene. I'll use the default cube as the room, so I'm holding S on the keyboard to scale it up and H on the keyboard to hide it. Shift A to add a plane, then scale it down along the X axis. Holding the axis letter X, Y, or Z will snap your transformation to that axis. And that's our leaf. Now we'll add the texture. First, let's take a look at a real snake plant leaf. Each leaf is edged on each side by a pale yellow band. The inner color looks like noisy waves of two shades of green, and often hard to see in photos. Along the length of the leaf are small ridges. Let's go to the shader editor and add a material to this plane. We'll use a wave texture to create the yellow borders. Connect a color ramp, and with the texture selected, hit Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. Switch the texture coordinate node to UV. Hit Ctrl and Shift at the same time to display the texture of the selected node on your model. Make sure you're in viewport shading mode. Scale the texture up until each side of the plane has a black edge. Center the texture by using the phase offset to shift the pattern to the left or right. Use the color ramp to adjust the size of the edges. Now add a noise texture. Use Ctrl T to add mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Set the texture coordinate node to UV and use a color ramp to increase the contrast. Use a mapping node to stretch the texture along the x-axis. Now duplicate these nodes. Increase the duplicate noise texture's overall scale and then increase the x-axis scale factor on its mapping node. And then increase the contrast with the color ramp. Shift A to add a mix RGB node from the color group to mix these two noise textures together. Mix, add, and subtract will all work well to get patterns that work in this context, but we'll use subtract here. Add another mix RGB node and connect the wave texture to its fact. This mixture node will apply color one to the black areas, our leaf's edges, and color two to the white area. So connect the noise texture to color two and set color one to a pale yellow. Use the wave texture's color ramp to adjust the width of these edges here. Then add another color ramp between our two mix nodes and assign dark and light green colors for the black and white sliders respectively. Now connect this RGB mix node to the shader's color input. Select all of these nodes and hit Shift P to put a frame around them. Now we'll set up a bump texture. Add a noise texture with a color ramp mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Change the texture coordinate node to UV. Increase the noise texture scale and use a mapping node to scale the texture along the Y axis. Use a color ramp to increase the contrast till you get something like this. Add a bump node and connect it to the shader's normal input. Connect this color ramp to the bump node's height. Set the strength to 0.2. Now you may have wondered why all of these texture coordinate nodes are set to UV. So I'm going to open another file to quickly illustrate why. Here's the basic plane mesh with the base material assigned to it. I created a texture with two stripes. When we add a texture to a model, Blender has several ways of interpreting that texture on the mesh, and each option allows the texture to be expressed differently on a model. Generated is the default texture coordinate mapping system, which means if no coordinate node is present, the texture defaults to generated. With this setting, Blender generates the texture coordinates automatically from the mesh's vertices based on the size and shape of the object. Deforming the mesh, moving the vertices around, has no effect on the texture, as you can see here. Notice that when I add a texture coordinate node using generated, the resulting texture behaves exactly the same way. Generated textures don't change with mesh deformations, but they do change with the size or shape of the object. Notice how the texture here has scaled with each object, 
making the lines grow in size. The texture doesn't remain uniform, which might not be ideal for textures that should be uniform, like bricks or wooden slats. If we switch the texture coordinate node to UV, Blender will map the texture to the model's vertices, as if the texture is stuck to each vertex of your mesh. This is what UV mapping is normally in Blender. When the vertices move, so does the texture. Back to our leaf. Use Control R to add some edge loops. Use an odd number vertically, I used 3, and any number horizontally, I used 15. We will use these vertices to reshape the leaves later, so it's entirely your preference. Turn on proportional editing, and with the top edges selected, scale them in towards each other. Notice how the texture sticks to the vertices. Pull the center vertex up until we get a nice point, and scale the base in as well. We can add a little bend to the leaf by dragging the center column of vertices down along the z-axis. Slide this column along the y-axis to give the texture an angled appearance. Switch to object mode, and with the leaf selected, hit R, X, and then 9, 0 to rotate the leaf 90 degrees around the x-axis. Switch into edit mode, select the entire leaf, and slide it upwards to position the origin point at the leaf's base. Now duplicate the leaf, and we'll hide them until we have a pot to put them in. We're going to make a very simple vase here, so shift A to add a circle. Lower the radius, I went with 0.18 meters, and lower the vertex count, 16 works well. With the circle selected, hit F to fill it with a face. I to inset this face, and then select the outermost edge of vertices, and hit E to extrude upwards. Hitting Z on your keyboard will snap your transformation to the Z axis. Use Control R to add some edge loops. Hold the Alt key to select an entire edge loop close to the top of the vase and hit O on your keyboard to enable proportional editing and scale outwards to shape the vase. Select the edge loop at the top. Hit E to extrude and S to scale your extrusion inwards. Hit E once more to extrude that loop into the vase. Hit F to fill it with a face. With the face selected, hit P to bring up the separate menu, and choose Selection to turn the selected face into its own object. We'll use that face for the soil, so hide it for now. Select the vase and add a subsurface modifier. Right click to bring up the object context menu and select Shade Smooth. To add some style to the bottom of the vase, add a few more edge loops. Select every other loop, ensure proportional editing is off and scale these loops inward. I'll use two materials on this face, one for the base and one for the main body. Assign a material to the base, I'm just using this green color as a placeholder. Now click the plus symbol to add another material, select everything that is not this bottom area, and click assign. Now I'll take care of these textures. For the main texture of the base, use a wave pattern. Add a color ramp and use Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Set the mapping nodes Y rotation to 90 degrees, rotating the texture so these rings go around our vase. Tighten the contrast between the bands using the color ramp and scale the texture to your preference. Add a mix RGB node which will allow us to assign colors for the black and white bands once we've connected the color ramp to the mix RGB nodes FAC. I'm going to use two shades of the same color, so connect the input RGB node to the color 1 and color 2 inputs on the mix RGB node. Add a brightness contrast node between the RGB color picker node and the color 2 input on our mix RGB node. When we change the brightness value up or down, that change will affect color 2, giving us a simple pattern that alternates between light and dark shades of whatever color is selected with the color picker. The color for the vase's base is just a simple pink uh, with high specular and metallic values and low roughness. The main color for the vase has a low metallic setting with mid-level specular and roughness settings. Let's unhide the soil and add a subsurface modifier to it. For the soil, we'll mix two noise textures together just as we did with the leaf. But first, 
Let's use a noise texture to displace the mesh to give it a lumpy appearance. Copy one of these noise textures and color ramps and drag it closer to the displacement input on the material output node. Increase the texture scale so the noise pattern is somewhat small. Add a displacement node and connect its output to the displacement input on the material output node. Connect the color ramp's output to the displacement node's height input. Set the scale on the displacement node to 0 .003. The two noise textures used for the soil's color are colorized by changing the color ramp's black and white shades to various shades of brown. These two colors are then mixed with a mix RGB node. In order to see our deformation on the model, we must do three things. First, set the render engine to cycles and the feature set to experimental. Second, ensure adaptive rendering is checked on the subsurface modifier. Adaptive rendering adapts the amount of subdivision relative to the camera, so areas of your model that are closer to the camera get more subdivision and thus more detail than areas further away. Three, for any texture that includes displacement, you'll need to specify that on the material by finding settings and selecting bump and displacement under displacement. We'll add one more layer to the color using a noise texture. Duplicate a noise texture and color ramp. Click on this caret to access the color ramp's tools and select reset color ramp. Modify the color ramp to reduce the white areas to small specks. Add another mix RGB node and use the spec texture as the mix node's fact. Connect the two brown textures mixed together to color one and set color two to a light gray shade. This will give us those small whitish gray specks that we usually find in potting soil. Take some time to fine tune these colors and shapes for the soil. You can only see nodal displacement in render mode, so let's switch over to render mode to fine tune the size of the displacement. I settled on 0 0.05. And now we have a soil pot ready for some snake plants. Unhide the leaves and make a couple duplicates. Use proportional editing to make minor shape changes to each leaf. Unnecessary and totally extra, I played around with using three leaves to make a small bundle. Drag the leaves you have into the pot and position them. Then duplicate the leaves as many times as you want to fill the pot. Be sure to rotate them slightly along the z-axis so the leaves aren't facing the same direction. Scale a few of the leaves on the outer edge of the pot down and use proportional editing to twist, rotate, and shape the leaves further. There's no wrong way to do this. Just experiment until you get something you like. Let's put this vase indoors. Unhide the default cube and tab into edit mode. Hit X to delete a face and then position the camera as shown. The back wall will have a window that this light will shine through, so move the light behind the wall. Add a couple of vertical edge loops and hit S to scale them out, then slide them to the left. From the back of the cube, add two horizontal edge loops. This middle rectangle will become our window, so adjust your edge loops as you see fit. Select this middle rectangle and hit P for the separate menu and choose selection. Tab into object mode and hit G to grab the rectangle and move it out along the y-axis. Give this object a material and change the surface to glass. And lower the roughness to zero. Duplicate the object and slide it further along the y-axis. Select both rectangles and go to the object menu. Now select set origin, origin to geometry. Select the second rectangle and click this minus button to remove the glass material. Tab into edit mode and use control R to add some vertical edge loops and at least one horizontal edge loop. Go to the modifier tab to add the wireframe modifier. This will be our window pane grill. The wireframe modifier creates edges at an angle, but let's go for smooth rounded bars. Add a subsurface modifier below the wireframe modifier. 
If we place the subsurface modifier above the wireframe, it will apply the wireframe to the edges resulting from subdivision, and we don't want that. But if we place the subsurface modifier below the wireframe, we lose the sharp edges of our frame as they are subdivided. To fix this, check the Crease Edges option on the wireframe modifier. This effectively applies an edge crease to all of the edges which will allow them to keep their sharpness. Set the value to 1. I lowered the thickness of the wireframe to 0 0.015. The boundary option will close off any boundary edges. Now our boundary edges will be hidden by the window frame, so you can leave them checked or unchecked. Either way works. Now duplicate the glass object one more time as this will become the window frame. Remove the glass material again and hit Ctrl A to bring up the apply menu and select scale. Now tab into edit mode. Select the face and hit E to extrude and S to scale outward. Hit X to delete the extra face created by extruding. Select the inner face and delete that as well. Select the remaining faces and extrude them along the Y axis. Add a bevel modifier and adjust the amount of bevel. We just want to get rid of the unrealistically perfect sharp edges, so the amount can be small. 0 0.005 meters works for me. On the side of the frame facing the room, create some edge loops. I used five. Select two of these edge loops, leaving one in between them unselected, and hit G to grab and pull these loops inward to add a little pattern to the frame. Now move these three window objects back into place. The last bit of modeling will be to add a table for the vase to sit on. Let's move the plan up and position the camera. Now add a circle. I use 16 vertices and one meter for the radius. Drag the circle up until it is flush with the vase's bottom. Hit F to fill the circle with a face and E to extrude downward. Hit I to inset and scale the inset circle down. E to extrude downward again and then S to scale inward again. Inset once more and then extrude down once more. For the base, extrude outward and then inset the bottom face. Now add a subsurface modifier, and then add edge loops to tighten up the shape. Right click to enable shade smooth, and then I added a couple more edge loops to refine the base of this table. The table is going to have a wooden top. The gaps between the planks will be created with displacement, so let's begin by adding a wave texture with the color ramp. With the wave texture selected, use Ctrl T to add mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Scale up the texture a bit and use the color ramp to increase the contrast. This model already has a subsurface modifier and the render engine is already set to cycles with the experimental feature set. So the only remaining step for displacement is to change the displacement setting on the material to bump and displacement. Add a displacement node, connect the color ramp to the height and set the scale to 0 0.005. Now I'm going to increase the scale to 0 0.3 just to illustrate a somewhat common problem. Let's switch over to render mode so you can see what I'm talking about. Displacement elevation in Blender is represented by a gray scale from black to white or 0 to 1 where black or 0 is at the bottom of the scale and white or 1 is at the top of the scale. This means the black parts of the texture are the lowest point of the displacement map and the white parts are the highest here things are inverted. So what happened? If we go to viewport overlays and turn on the normals, we can see the normals are actually inside the mesh. It's a little unobvious because the inward facing faces of the table's underside are poking through the top face here. But since the top of the table is just one face, uh, it should have only one normal pointing out. This happened because of the way I built the table extruding downward. So if you followed the steps I did to make this table, your table's normals are probably inverted too. So the fix here is easy. Just flip the normals by going to Mesh, Normals, and Flip. And if you have a really complicated mesh and some of the normals may be facing inside and some may be facing outside, or you're just not sure, choose Recalculate Outside. I'm back into render mode and we can see that fixed this problem. Now that things are looking normal, I'll set the scale for this displacement to 0 0.03. 
I don't want the base of the table to have this wood texture. So create a new material for the table base, select the relevant faces, and assign the new material. Now back to the wood texture. Duplicate the wave texture, color ramp, mapping, and coordinate nodes. Increase the new wave texture's distortion and scale the mapping node along the x-axis. We're going to use the same RGB input color setup we used on the leaves. So add an RGB input node, a mix RGB node, and a brightness and contrast node. Connect them as shown and then pick a main color for the wood table. Don't forget to connect the wave textures color ramp output to the mix RGB's fact. Now connect the mix RGB's output to the shader color's input. For this texture's normal map, we're going to add some graininess to the table with a noise texture. Add a noise texture and a color ramp. Increase the noise texture's scale and tighten the contrast on the color ramp. A little distortion can be added here too. Add a mix RGB node and connect the second wave texture's output to color 1 and the noise texture's output to color 2. Add a bump node and connect it to the shader's normal input. Connect the mix node's output to the bump node's height and then set the strength to about 0.22. Now check the texture in render mode and then make any changes you see necessary. For me, this gap between the planks seems too large, so I'm going to tighten it up using the color ramp of the initial wave texture. I'll also change the displacement scale to 0.02. The base of this table has some faces showing the wood texture, so I added some edge loops just to clearly identify the faces so I could select them and assign the proper material. For the base, I just use a simple brown color. And this is the entire wooden tabletop material. Shift P to put frames around the nodes you'd like to keep together or move around as one. For the room, I'm going to mix a couple of noise textures to give the wall a nice texture that's pretty common. All of the work takes place in the material's normal map. Let's add a noise texture and color ramp and add a bump node as well. Increase the contrast on the color ramp so we have pretty distinct areas of black and white. Remember the white areas will appear higher and the black areas will appear lower. This texture will serve as a mix RGB nodes fact, so add a mix RGB node. We'll be able to put one texture in the white area and a different texture in the black area. We'll use noise textures for each, so duplicate this noise and color ramp twice. Hold shift and control down on any node to see its texture on your model. The first noise texture will be scaled up very high to give us small bumps and the second one will be scaled to give us slightly larger noise. Connect both to the mix nodes color inputs and connect the original noise textures output to the mix nodes fact. Now let's take a look at it on the model. Alright a few minor adjustments and now we can connect our mix RGB node to the bump node's height and set the strength to 0.22. And here's what it looks like on the model. All right, let's head to the back of our room and I'll rotate this lamp so that the light pours in through this window and let's set it to sun. Now some last minute tweaks and changes to these leaves and fine tuning the camera placement. I'll change the room color to a shade of peach and then I repositioned the table and vase. For the leaves I want to change the material so the ridges of our normal map catch the light better like real snake plant leaves. So let's increase the specular and I'm going to darken the table a bit. To add a texture for the environment, go to the World tab, left click this yellow dot to bring up the color menu and select Environment Texture. Then click on Open and add an HDRI. All the HDRIs I use come from HDRIHaven.com. 
HDRI Haven contains hundreds of HDRIs that provide a 360 degree background texture for your world in Blender, as well as proper lighting, all 100% free. Here's what the render looks like so far. Notice there's no shadow of the grate on the wall. I'm not sure why that is, but I think it's because the lamp is set to sun, which illuminates the entire scene, and the back wall of our room doesn't exist. So light floods in from the back wall of the room, obliterating this shadow that we should have on this wall. But if I change the lamp to area, it provides more directional light through this window, resulting on that shadow of the grate, as you can see here. I also changed the pink on the vase to a gold. I wanted to brighten up the scene a bit more, so I added a second lamp close to the camera by selecting the camera and then hitting Shift S and selecting Cursor to Selected to snap the 3D cursor to the camera. Then I hit Shift A to add a new area lamp positioning it just to the left of the camera. Then I lightened the wall color, which produced this render. The last change I made was to add a ledge and wood texture to the window frame. I added the ledge by duplicating the bottom face of the frame and scaling it out. Then I alternated between extruding down, insetting, and scaling down the same way we did with the table to get the shape shown. I added a very simple wood texture to the window frame using the same process for the tabletop texture. Add a wave texture with a color ramp mapping and coordinate nodes. Switch the texture coordinate to UV, tab into edit mode, hit U, and select Smart UV Project. To ensure the wood grain follows the frame, select these two sides and go into the UV editor. Enable UV Sync Selection by clicking this button here, which selects whatever you've selected on the model on the UV map. With these faces selected, rotate them 90 degrees by hitting R90. Now back to the material. Increase the distortion on the wave texture and increase the X scale on the mapping node. Connect this to a bump node's height input and set the strength to 0.22. And keep the color white. Rendering at 1200 samples produced this image. Filling the back of the room with a face and extending it enough to include the camera produces this render. If you set the area lamp behind the camera to 55 watts, you get this render. And if the same lamp is set to 155 watts, you get this image. And that's it for my tutorial. Thank you for checking it out. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If so, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. I've got some good ideas coming up. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Thanks again and happy blending.